The presidential election, social media, technology, and pop culture are just a few sources for 2012's newest additions to the public lexicon. Here to catch up on the latest neologism is Grant Barrett, co-host of Public Radio's Away With Words. Grant, thanks for coming in and giving us a sneak peek to the New York Times 2012 list of words that you just My wrote. My pleasure. So we're happy to have you here. Um, before we get started on the new words, what does it take for a word or a phrase to make it onto your list? It has to be significant in the year in question. It doesn't have to be brand new, but it has to be important. It has to be a part of the public discourse. It has to be highly relevant and something you've probably heard of. For example, several election uh, phrases emerged uh, this year, including one that's not even a word. It's actually a number. 47 percent. Uh, why is this significant? Well, do you remember the surreptitious video that was caught of uh, Mitt Romney talking to big donors and he mentioned that 47 percent of the country would never vote for him because all they wanted was handouts? That's the 47 percent. And people refer to that now as right. I'm, I'm either part of that or not part of that. Also in your election category came up the term etch-a-sketch moment. Um, what does that mean? Well, it's another one of those Romney campaign kind of awkward moments where an aide to Mitt Romney suggested that if the campaign wasn't going well, they could just shake the Etch-a-Sketch and start over. And of course, the Obama campaign leapt on that and said, oh, you mean he's a flip-flopper and he's just changing his point of view just to get elected, even though if he doesn't, even if he doesn't really believe it. Or in this case, an Etch-a-Sketcher. Right, could yeah. <laughs> erase it. Um, from the science and tech world, uh, fracking, it's been around the term, but a lot of people say it's as bad as it sounds. Can you tell us what it is? Yeah, fracking is high pressure water that is um, pushed into the ground in order to release oil that is trapped in shale. That's a really short version of it. I've been tracking this word for 10 years, and it really came to the fore in 2012 because of possible health issues related to fracking. And also concerns about, we're looking at video here, where it goes into the shale, and they actually break apart that shale with chemicals mm -hmm. and sand and a basically force apart the shale so that you can release a natural gas. Um, is The concern is over the water, correct? That's right, because so that process may leak chemicals or oil itself into the water, the drinking water. Okay, this next term is something that I actually believe I suffer from. Uh, nomophobia, I believe you call <laughs> it. Uh, tell us what that is. Nomophobia, it is no more phone phobia. It's a fear of not having your phone. You left it in your other coat, you left it in the car, you left it at the office, you don't have it and you're like, oh, I can't check my email, I can't check my voicemail. You feel like you're disconnected from the world. That's nomophobia. I have it, and I've often said, you know, I would rather lose my wallet than lose my phone. <laughs> yes, so uh, I think that qualifies for that. Many of us. This is one of my favorite things to come out at 2012. Social media gets the credit for this phrase called pet shaming. Tell oh. us about that. Well, this is where people will, so you've got a dog who dis misbehaves, maybe um, does a number two on the carpet or something like that. And so you put a sign around its neck saying, I went number two on the carpet and then you take a photo and you post it to Facebook or Twitter so the world can see you shaming your dog and people do it with their cats and their whole websites built around pet shaming. Is that, it's pretty new, right? It is kind of new and I think what it responds to is this common experience that we have with our pets. We all have had this where the pet didn't do the thing it was supposed to do or did something that you didn't expect. So it's just kind of saying, oh look, my dog does number two where it shouldn't also. I think it's kind of cute. Um, I learned this next term that you had on your list and I was happy to see it there from my 16 year old niece uh, at her high school. It's called YOLO. YOLO was the number one term that I got from high school students in San Diego this year. I do speaking engagements in schools talking about slang, and that was the, by far and away. It means you only live once, and it's kind of a carpe diem sentiment. You're about to say or do something unwise or kind of foolish, and so you might say, oh, YOLO. And one of the kids in one of the classes in, in the southeast, he said to me that the only good response to YOLO is yo-yo, you on your own. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own and YOLO. And actually, it's, it's traveled all over the nation. Yeah, I, yeah, I actually huge. picked it up in uh, Los Angeles mm -hmm. with my niece and then also again in, in Cincinnati with another niece. Yep. So it's just wildfire. It's a good one. Are, are there any other words that we should be uh, have our ears perked up to uh, as far as on your list? Well, one that I really liked this year was the word doxing. It's an old term. It means to document somebody. It means to find out everything that you can about them uh, and then to release the, the naughty bits or the embarrassing stuff to the public. Yeah, I'm sure lots of people would like to do that, <laughs> former boyfriends and girlfriends. Well, Grant Barrett, co-host of Public Radio's Away With Words, thank you so much for this uh, My pleasure. sneak peek. Very good.